Hello, and thank you for keeping us company. This is why in the morning, my name is Dereva Hillary. We are now moving to a discussion. We want to look at the budget allocation uh, for this year, 2020 to 2021 budget allocation. A few things uh, that we didn't expect they would be happening or uh, coming from last year, the budget allocation, things have changed or things haven't changed. We, what worked for us, what didn't work for us. And right now we are speaking about COVID-19 and people are suffering and uh, especially the business sector has been affected badly. And the solvent question people are asking is how will they uh, manage their employees? And of course we have seen the ramification of the COVID-19, but now budget allocation coming uh, to us, that which will be announced on 11th or will be read in Parliament on 11th of this month. We wait and see how much will be allocated. And just a reminder, last year uh, when the former Cabinet Secretary uh, for Treasury Rotit said, uh, acknowledged that the economy does face challenges, which he listed a few of the uh, problems and he said creating an enabling environment for business particularly for the micro small and medium enterprise in order to accelerate the growth of our economy and create more jobs for the for our youth was one of the concerns and the need to be prudent and efficient in our spending the need to mobilize domestic resources to fund priority projects and programs there was also concerning the need to reduce our fiscal deficit in order to stabilize and reduce our debt and the need to implement reforms that will enhance our efficiency and make us more competitive. I don't know whether some of these things were answered to the last year's uh, budget allocation. Speak to us, send us your comments or our questions to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 channel on Facebook and Instagram. My guest this morning is Job Mogira, research analyst. Keep us company. Good morning. Good morning, Hilary. How are you? I'm very well. We are three days shy of 90 days since coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, we have seen businesses closing down. We have seen uh, people losing their jobs. I've heard of a big hotel that uh, has been sold recently. I don't know how many more are on the line to do this. And we have seen the government coming up trying to say we will support, we will support. We had the eight stimulus point to help cushion some of the Kenyans uh, because we can't reach everyone, of course. But now we have a, a, a budget that is coming up soon. Uh, there have been hearses here and there. Uh, we have seen, uh, we have heard of the members of parliament complaining, like the CDF. And just like you were telling me before we began here, that uh, that is what makes them stand in the in their villages. Coming from uh, last year, let's begin with the health sector. They were given 40.7 billion shillings uh, for the universal health coverage, and just uh, over the weekend we had the president mention that. Uh, were it not for some of the uh, limitations, we, ha we would have uh, de-escalated some of the directives and the measures. Like uh, now, uh, he gave an example with Siaya County having 10 beds and 9 are occupied. Yet we had a budget to cater for our health. What is wrong with us or what will be happening moving forward? Well, I think those are so many issues eh, in one statement, but we'll try to look at them uh, from an objective uh, point. Mm -hmm. uh, first things first, uh, the budget for this year should have factored in the corona pandemic in a big way. Mm -hmm. That's compared to the previous year. And one of the, one of the things I find that we are doing as a country is sticking to routine even when abnormal things are happening. As in, we are behaving <laughs> normally, and abnormal things are happening. Yeah. Like now, the, the corona pandemic should have taught us one thing, our health systems. Sure. Uh, the other day you had uh, Governor Mutua talk about how people fly outside the country. Mm -hmm. But this time round, they cannot fly. Mm -hmm. So if you are really fair as a society, we should not be short-sighted. Mm -hmm. We should be at a position to improve our health systems. Mm -hmm. And look, uh, what, 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 what happens is uh, there's that routine from since we were young when the likes of Chris Okemo, our finance ministers, 
and carrying of that uh, briefcase. briefcase to parliament. Mm -hmm. We are doing the same. But remember the 2010 constitution mm -hmm. gave Kenyans a chance to participate mm -hmm. in the budget making process. Unfortunately, where we fail as Kenyans mm -hmm. and even a majority of the youth mm -hmm. is we never contribute to these discussions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we expect the MPs who we sent to Nairobi to represent us to do everything for us. Okay. It's not possible. Uh, 290 people, or 349 when you world everybody, cannot uh, decide for our country. Yeah, for oh, well, they can million. decide, they can make a decision because they have powers, mm -hmm. but now the, the thought process, the cooking of everything, mm -hmm. True. they cannot do that. We need to participate. And now, Last week, uh, there was a call for Kenyans to participate in the budget-making process. We don't, and especially the youth, mm -hmm. they don't care. But I think wanajipanga kuja kuunda memes after budget imesomo. <laughs> but before tuunda hizi memes, mm -hmm. wacha kwanza pia tuchangie mjadala. Like now, uh, why, where are we with the allocation for the Minister of Health? If you look at the allocations for various ministries, right. You would have wished that the health ministry gets more monies. And, and uh, it's not getting more monies, mm -hmm. like have uh, 50 billion for Minister of Health. No, I would advocate for whatever we call an itemized budget. Mm -hmm. We are giving you 50 billion shillings in the Ministry of Health. But the BSC committee in parliament mm -hmm. should be telling them that one billion, item one. Two billion, item two. Another billion, item three. In okay. that, uh, construction of referral hospitals should be itemized in that one billion. Recruitment of nurses. Recruitment of clinical officers. Okay. Construction of at least 20 beds eh? <laughs> instead of 10. Yeah. But now, at times what happens is we say the ministry will have 20 billion. Pesa sasa ikilant 20 billion, mm, you do whatever you want with it. As long as you've paid the salaries, everything mm. else. They forget about they it. They forget about it. Now, the auditor general should be doing a, his audit based on the items that were in the budget. That is, we said in the 50 billion, 2 billion mm. should go to construction of referral hospitals. So the Ministry of Health should show us whether they constructed or whether they constructed the hospitals worth two billion. But now, after this uh, Corona, mm -hmm. I don't want to be a pessimist, but we could be going back to where we were before Corona. And now, if another Corona comes next year, God mm -hmm. forbid, mm -hmm. it will be chaotic. So I would like maybe to advise the Minister for Health, His Excellency or Honorable Mutahi Kago. Mm -hmm. uh, today could behave normally and we can't afford to behave normally. That's true. kule and make sure budget implemented normally. It should be implemented abnormally. Uh, speaking of which, they have been given uh, like two weeks to come up with a clear way and provide 300 beds per county. Yeah. If they have to, to have these 300 beds, which hospitals? Do we have those facilities to accommodate 300 beds? And if so, we have we have had problems with the even machine and the dispensary they they don't have enough space we are speaking of social distancing do we have enough facilities to stock these 300 beds yes and no mm -hmm. yes in this way extraordinary situations call for extraordinary measures mm -hmm. again it's an abnormal situation we mm -hmm. can't behave normally so like uh, i'll speak about a county that i know Mm -hmm. And that's Meru, where I was born and bred. Right. Now, if you go to Meru Level 5 Hospital today, mm -hmm. and you want an extra space to construct 300 beds, it may be a tall order. Okay. But again, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity here. The Minister for Health said mm -hmm. Kenyans have stopped going to hospitals mm -hmm. because they are afraid of mm -hmm. coronavirus. coronavirus right? uh, with the curfews, and there's so many government regulations, people are not misbehaving like uh, slashing each other's hands mm, or yeah. such. So there must be a ward somewhere in Merutown mm -hmm. 
that is in empty. Meru General Hospital mm -hmm. that is that, that does not have so many uh, patients like it used to happen before. All right. So now this is an opportunity at least to convert that ward mm -hmm. to make sure now that uh, we are not admitting malaria people, people with homa, people with uh, panga cuts are not coming. Mm -hmm. Now this is the space. This is what we need to improve to take care of uh, the isolation. Uh, and if you in the isolation wards, eh, mm -hmm. we do not need so much sophistication. We don't need those uh, reclining beds or anything. It's a place where we are saying, because coronavirus is uh, highly infectious, mm -hmm. at least we will keep these people here with the basic needs, like a bed, like food, mm -hmm. and everything. And also some space for the medical personnel to, to operate on. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is possible. Now, where I'm talking about impossibility, mm -hmm. look at the bureaucratic processes of procurement in this country. Now, for us to say we extend, uh, we create a 300-bed facility in Meruton, mm -hmm. we need uh, the procurement process mm -hmm. sure. that will go, the governor will, uh, the, 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 the procurement people will do a proposal maybe to the CEO of Meru General Hospital, the CEO will take it to the board, the board will take it maybe to the governor for yeah. the allocation. Once the money is allocated, it will come from IFMIS. Mm -hmm. That's another process. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about like uh, at least 60 days. For it to so if we need 30 days eh, to have a 300 bed facility, mm -hmm. first of all, the tender to, 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 to open, uh, to, to, to get a contractor to do the, the, the hospital and such, mm -hmm. you have to advertise in two weeks. There is. Two weeks, then there is the bid opening, which may take another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then there is a, a location uh, or awarding of the tender. Then there is financing of the tender. Mm -hmm. So here are 30 days. Eh? So Come is, <laughs> is this what Honorable Muteika is saying? We, ha we don't have to behave now normally. Exactly. These bureaucracies have to end. We have to end those bureaucracies. Mm -hmm. And I always say this. Eh? Uh, when we are talking about integrity and uh, prudent financial management, mm -hmm. uh, like today, uh, you, will be, you will be required to advertise a tender mm -hmm. for 14 days. Mm -hmm. before it's awarded. But now here, mm -hmm. I believe you can seek express authority from uh, the Ministry of Health or from the, ministry, from the Treasury mm -hmm. and tell them, because of the abnormal circumstances that we are operating in, mm -hmm. please allow us to do this advertisement for seven days. Okay. When it comes to bids opening, you can have concurrent events. You don't have to open tenders today, meet tomorrow to evaluate, the day after, travel to Naivasha to open the tender boxes. No, mm -hmm. we, are be, we are operating in ad abnormal situations. Let people sit from morning mm -hmm. to midnight. Okay. Finish opening of the tenders and everything. When the contractor comes to site, get a contractor who can hire as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Work that could be done in 14 days, let it be done in seven days. We have to behave abnormally because if we continue with our normal behaviors, including procurement, mm -hmm. as long as you do not flout the laws, mm -hmm. and then again, uh, what you're doing mm -hmm. can be seen. Sometimes I believe eh, right. if you flout a procurement law, mm -hmm. like uh, it was supposed to be 14 days, but you did it in seven days, have some backup, the circumstances mm -hmm. that yeah. led you to seven days. True. But now, make sure. The mm -hmm. money is used prudently. So when maybe someone takes you to court, they are not questioning that the building is in place. They are questioning your 14 days. Yeah, 14 now days. the case will be 14 days versus 7 days. Mm -hmm. Have some backup documents, how you sought the authorities to do all those things, and whether the authorities were approved mm -hmm. and such. Uh, that's true. Now, in reference to what uh, the governor of Machakos, uh, Mutua, said that now people are not flying abroad, they'll be treated here. Let's speak about post-COVID-19. We have those 300 beds in our counties, assuming they are now here. Do, will we still have them after COVID-19 or we have cases where uh, some of the facilities that have been set aside, like with, um, they are using schools and uh, some spaces here and there, will they be transformed to be a clear word where people now will be saying we have this hospital and it's well functioning, we have enough capacity? Num number one, 
if a, if a school is an isolation center, it cannot become a hospital after corona. True. Because of the titling of the land, that land that does, does not belong to the Minister of Health. It mm. belongs to the Minister Next of shame. Education, maybe through the schools mm -hmm. or some community somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, after, after the pandemic, and I'm talking about after the intense, to, mm. because uh, we, are, we are likely to stay for long mm -hmm. with it, uh, we cannot say that people will stop flying. Mm -hmm. But you see, human beings operate with incentives. Mm -hmm. I've looked at the, the budget estimates mm -hmm. that will be uh, presented on Thursday. And one of the things I have liked mm -hmm. is there is a 200 million allocation to Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital to build a cardiac lab. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So if people here used to go to India for cardiac related ailments, mm -hmm. then we are providing an alternative for the people to go now to Moi and Teaching Referral Hospital mm -hmm. because now you have a fully equipped lab. True. And I would also like to encourage these guys who travel abroad. Squeezy. <laughs> Zoom, unezato a daktari India, mm -hmm. umlete hapa. So, serikali pia inafai kaze kidogo the way people travel abroad. Right. But now the government, yezi kaza kama aijaweka alternatives. True. So, like that one in, uh, in Moy University, we have 200 million shillings allocation. Now, this budget, a good budget, we normally see it has timelines. Mm -hmm. You can't say we have budgeted 10 million for, for Hillary. And mm -hmm. then we don't give you timelines to do it. If we are budgeting you money to buy something, mm -hmm. we should give you the timelines. When we should come back and check whether you did it. Exactly. Now, these 200 million for a cardiac lab, mm -hmm. as early as yesterday, the management of Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, your budget is parliament next week. They should start the process of building the cardiac lab mm -hmm. so that in one year, the lab is in place. In your next year, Sasa, mm -hmm. they can request to, to build something else. Right. But we may find ourselves in a situation where this story, Badu, Aijanini. But now, about flying outside the country, mm -hmm. I don't think as a country, and we all know this, we don't need to fly out. Mm -hmm. why, why do we fly out? We fly out because our, we don't trust our systems. But we can create trust in our systems. Mm -hmm. Some of the minds that treat people who move outside the country mm -hmm. are Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Kenyan doctors in, uh, in uh, Australia, in Europe, countries. in yeah. India, mm -hmm. and such. I know of a hospital in Kenya that is treating people using Indian doctors, but online. online. You just consult your doctor in India, you pay the consultancy there, and then you're treated here. Mm -hmm. We need to make... Uh, Healthcare, the best thing that this country country can be proud of. True. Otherwise, uh, we will not have learned much from. All right. Now, uh, there was a concern about last year. There was a concern about uh, caring for the youth and uh, ensuring that they are being catered for. We're speaking of the Ministry of Sports. We're speaking about the Ministry of uh, IT. We're speaking about uh, and the youth affairs. Every ministry that involves the young people. Do you think moving from last year to this point, the youth have been cared enough? And I have had conversations here, the youth want just to, to share the cake and no youth want to participate in the baking. What would you make of that? Nikola uh, Moja and a youth. Well, I, I want to dispel one notion. By the way, I'm a youth. I'm a youth. I'm a youth. I'm a youth. You know, there's this notion that uh, if you go and challenge a youthful person to do one, two, three, mm -hmm. nowadays, and uh, I'm so passionate about the youth, I've caught so many of them, mm -hmm. I've talked to them in my personal capacity, I've written mm -hmm. so much about issues that the youth should consider. And one of my articles that I call the fallacy of modern day role model, you can find it, it's, it's online, eh? mm -hmm. or any viewer who is interested can ask for the link after this, I'll send to you, you share with them. All right, true. The fallacy is this, the youths want to become rich. They have role models who are rich, mm -hmm. but they don't like asking themselves, how did this person mm -hmm. become rich? 
Right. So they are looking at someone who was 21, who was 25. By 28, this person has everything. Mm -hmm. Five houses, three cars, and all those things. Now, so many of the youths start desiring to, to possess that, mm -hmm. but they don't ask them, what's the process of making this person get all these now in my fallacy of role modern day role models mm -hmm. i'm talking about the admiration of the wrong people mm -hmm. people i'm calling in that article thieves mm -hmm. and i've presented reasons why i think they are thieves mm -hmm. now uh, saizi if you tell me uh, to approximate to you i've done enough research our youth should be progressing mm -hmm. in in a normal circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, ignore the abnormal things. Mm -hmm. What we call in economics, holding all factors constant. constant yeah. There is a cycle that the youth should follow. Mm -hmm. The government is presenting uh, monies to help the youth. Right. But it's clear, no one will come uh, to uh, Hillary. When I'm under 35, so she can do your gava, it's not like that. It will never happen. It will never happen. Right. The government has allocated uh, millions, I have seen uh, some billions for university education. Mm -hmm. That is one way of helping the youth. Mm -hmm. If you are admitted to the university with a C, plus, the government is taking care of uh, some amount. Apo, Serikali Meshuglikia youth. The government has money for vocational training. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very happy because uh, the CES for education nowadays is a youthful person who understands. And I saw him mm -hmm. in one of the polytechnics in my village. And I was very happy because these are youth who is standing here showing the youth that no matter the, the level of uh, the institution that you're studying in, mm -hmm. we have opportunities for you and we have this and this for you. But all of my youths, okay, I'm not uh, doing anything <laughs> against the memes. Uh -huh. Ah, so our memes, wakotu mahali wa mejificha. But what should we be talking about now? We have studied the, 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 the economy of Kenya. Unemployment rates are going high. Right. But Hillary, I'll tell you, guys are struggling. There are no enough fundies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes na pendaga experiments. Ni pigie, ni chukue namba ya plamba hapa saizi ni mkol. 99% chance. Hata patikana leo. Anapatikana kesho. Mm -hmm. Ama kesho kutwa, julewa kona job. Nipigi electrician saizi. Mm -hmm. Atapatikana kesho kutwa, lewa kona job. Nipigi fundi wa mawe saizi. Atapatikana mm -hmm. kesho kutwa, lewa kona job. Right. Now, this one is a gap of a, of a, of a sector that is, that is not fully, uh, it doesn't have enough labor force. Mm -hmm. But the youths, hawataki yo maneno, wasema atakatua chore memes. Ili hali saizi, if you go ufanye job ya welding, mm -hmm. I assure you, where's Ilala nja? Hilary, I'm a graduate Atutaki of economics. Atutaki kazi ngumu na za kujishafua. Atutaki kazi ngumu. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a graduate of economics and statistics. Mm -hmm. I do research on so many areas. But I'll tell you for free. Saizi, mm -hmm. God forbid, if anything happens, mm -hmm. na nijipateleo sina job, ntafanya welding, mm -hmm. ntafanya electrician, ntafanya kazi ya mjengo. And how will I now mm -hmm. convert my degree to give me an upper, an upper hand? Mm -hmm. That is what matters. How I will use my economics, my skills in research to convert my welding job. But my welding business has to work. will drive. But first of all, for it to drive, I must be a welder. Mm -hmm. So the youths. Awataki yo maneno, wanangoja gavai kuja kuwasaidia, iwasaidia na jobs, the job market is flooded, we know. Mm -hmm. So let the youths watch our chanuke kidogo, let them try those hard jobs. But those who have degrees and uh, diplomas and such mm -hmm. should now leverage on their degrees and the knowledge they have mm -hmm. to make their businesses succeed. Now, what would you attribute to this uh, mere ignorance? Is it about an attitude? Is it lack of skills? What is it that we are not so much exposed and the opportunities that are not there? My user to Chukui. The attitude. Mm -hmm. Attitude mbaya sana. The people we are admiring, if I, uh, the people we are admiring, to metengeneza ile attitude ya, tunataka tutu one mali yao, we want to get their mali, and as I said, how are you? How I how how I do how this person mm -hmm. reached there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go challenging the youths to participate, they will tell you, "Ayo to mezoya, gava itafanya." Hilar in Nairobi, 
There is a time siku ana job. Mm -hmm. And I had a family. And I had to feed the family. I was a graduate. Lakini nilikuwa kinyozi. Mm -hmm. And I used to get money. Nikuwa anendea vitu mahali kamukunji huko. <laughs> na kuja na juu nao because nilikuwa nimenunua kasuti before ni gio kazi ishe kwanza. Mm. So I could do all those manual jobs. Nimeendesha taxi. Unaamka 4 a.m. by saa mbili mm. wewe uko na saa mbili yako kwa mfuko. But now the youths the youths wanakuona kutoka 9 mm. wanaona uko na saa mbili. They don't know how you got it. Wacha to change attitude. Mm -hmm. Tujue number 1. Mm -hmm. The, the normal white collar jobs eh, mm -hmm. is not the best way to go now. Mm -hmm. But there is, there is so much opportunity mm -hmm. in these other in these other sectors, mm -hmm. the semi formal sectors. Right. Now to change your attitude, you can kuna contribution mahali, a public participation mahali. It's us to change this nation. We can't expect the 349 MPs to do everything for us. Leo to kiito a twenty to changi budget. Let the youths come. Watch our letter is a meme. Kwayo mkutano. Actually, another question would be your platform you kwapi. Because mtoto wambia, okay, <coughs> wana taka public kwapi. Uh, my youths are so magi gazeti. Wana so ma memes. So you call it. True. O, you do what is easy. Mm -hmm. Wako WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Wako Facebook. Very few on Twitter. Mm. But end of fungua gazeti mm. yata kama uko na any old copy here fungua mm -hmm. there is an advertised public participation on so many issues mm -hmm. i've seen them even right. in meru calling us to come and participate in this mm -hmm. nazina yako kwa newspaper it's by the way it's a constitutional provision that for every government project mm -hmm. there is public participation if you look at uh, the allocation mm -hmm. the treasury this year the biggest itemized uh, thing they have in that budget is so many billions, I can't remember the exact figure, mm -hmm. for public participation. Oh, see? But so are youths, uh, sometimes to napeago kachai kule ukienda kwa mini. So uneza kuaweni youth, mm -hmm. ukonanja umeshinda kwa village, na unge changia Na unge enda yo mjada la uchangia, na ukule in the process. <laughs> So, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, we'll be taking a very short break, and when we come back, we now move to other sectors like the education. We will talk about um, other sectors like the infrastructure, of which the president has been so much uh, interest interested in this particular area of the infrastructure. So we take a very short break, and when we come back, we'll be looking into that and some of your feedbacks in regards to the budget allocation. That is our focus this morning. Keep it coming, right to five four. T2021 budget allocation that is will be read on Thursday the 11th in Parliament and we were just speaking about the youth who are so lazy their work is to make the memes on social media what else can they do send us your comments or your reactions to all our social media platforms y254 channel on Facebook and Instagram at y254 channel on Twitter now uh, job Yes. You you were mentioning about something uh, about the youth how, and their attitude, and just to look back into last year, they were allocated 1.7 billion shillings for the SMEs, and this is one of the areas the youth are um, have flooded the sector, uh, not because of anything, but like you were saying, depends on where you have come from and how things are in your life, and so many youth are in the uh, small scale uh, entrepreneurship. Coming to this year. What do you expect will be happening and with our attitude as youth to Izi Kazi Zamjengo and uh, Juakali and Pia Kuza Peremende Kwa Mat, by the way, ni Kazi? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the money for the youth can be accessed. We have uh, the, youth, the youth fund, youth enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. We also now have uh, the money that would come di indirectly to the youths through the SMEs. Mm -hmm. Now in SMEs, what you only need to do is uh, prove that you have a good idea. Right. And uh, much as I know several banks that do not fund startups, then mm -hmm. uh, there are other institutions, circles, that can fund startups. That's a you save kidogo, unapewa ata kama ni 20k, unaanza kakitu mahali. Mm 
-hmm. Now, when the government says we have allocated this money to SMEs, this money, I could argue you do it SMEs to go and easy pass and party my youths. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. there, are, there is what we call fiscal policies. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things is now, there is uh, the minimum reserve that the banks should have right. uh, with the central bank. So when the central bank has this money, like even uh, people saw it during Corona time, eh? mm -hmm. people were excused for three months mm -hmm. from uh, not paying uh, their loans, mm -hmm. which means so many banks could have a challenge of meeting the minimum reserves. But now because the central bank has some money somewhere, mm -hmm. it will help the banks to, to bridge that gap. And that is what happens with the SME's money. Right. Uh, that uh, the SMEs, those small businesses, can access loans from other small businesses, mm -hmm. but the central bank, using the money allocated by Treasury, mm -hmm. can cushion mm -hmm. those small uh, lenders. Mm -hmm. Now, for you to benefit from SMEs, again, you need to have um, uh, an enterprise. Right. And an enterprise does not have to be big. I don't want to speak like a motivational speaker. When you want to say market, nilianzaga hotel yangu na sahani moja. No, I don't want to, to do that way. Mm. Maybe what I would like to encourage the youth eh, right. is uh, identify someone who you know as a business that is, na si lazima kue youth, ada kue mze. Muapproach, muulize. By the way, hapa ulifikaje, how much did you uh, start with? Mm -hmm. To skuja kukua na hizi stories za pia umeingia kwa net, yuka soma vitu za uongo, okay. yuka fuatilia raw models, like uh, someone steals 7 million from uh, a petrol station somewhere, mm -hmm. the story is published, so and so has been arrested, and achiliwa, five years down the line, the person has a very big uh, taxi business, and then the person is invited as a motivational speaker, how I started my business from scratch. Mm -hmm. Then you forget this person was arrested for stealing seven million, right. and she maneuvered their way out mm -hmm. until now. Now, to avoid here, watch at once and all of us. To shall go. Then to sequel of ambitious, mm -hmm. you to as if you will start a business today, mm -hmm. and tomorrow you're driving. No. Me, I know I tell people here, mm -hmm. the business, <laughs> when times are tough, mm -hmm. the business of man is to survive before you start living. Sure. And for, for most people who do not have an inheritance, mm -hmm. uh, before they started living, there is a time they survived. Mm -hmm. And now that is mo what most youths mm -hmm. uh, should be looking at. Anza kabiashara kidogo. What is your budget for food? Mm -hmm. It's uh, maybe a hundred shillings per day. Is this business giving you a hundred shillings per day after you, uh, you yeah, remove yeah. all the expenses? Mm -hmm. Then you're doing well with time, eh? Mm -hmm. to and then the youths that are in business, mm -hmm. let them support those who are not in business. And it's not through money, mm -hmm. no. And the ideas and motivation. Because Mr. Kingine youths want to work on mm -hmm. on a job, and this idea, kona kabia shara fulani mahali, and this idea. And then you come expecting job will give you money. Mm -hmm. That's a bad mentality, my friend. And sure. uh, most relationships die when money comes in. Yeah. So the youth should approach people who have businesses to learn from them. In fact, it is a way msea kona kabia shara mahali, mwitisha internship. Ya demoja. Boss, nataka nishinde hapa leo. Nione, how you open, how you close. Then you told me, well, you have 5K. This is how you have motivation. You mm have -hmm. 5K. You have a lot of Then keep in touch with that guy for inspiration. Read. You see some memes, mm -hmm. read, read. Now, as our memes peer, they have a very good opportunity. True. It's only some of them do not know how to exploit it. Mm -hmm. Let them talk to those guys who have done memes before and now they are doing well. Mm -hmm. Pia wao we inbox mse. Now as when you succeed, stay kuwa mention majina hapa. Yeah. Wasikue like uh, wame brag. Because another bad culture we have in Kenya is where a, a youth yeah, does something. Mm -hmm. Ukisha fanikiwa wewe sasa ni hivo. Una panda bay, you don't mentor the, the, the young ones. Mm -hmm. And then I believe uh, if first of all we start by changing the attitude, the youths will be able to access mm -hmm. all these things that the government is allocating to them. Mm -hmm. But one of the things they have to understand is nothing that the government has allocated for the youths in the budget that will be given directly to the youths at where kuja ushike hi 
hapana right. now the the youth should look for the opportunities mm -hmm. where this money for the government is trickling down to them mm -hmm. yeah all right let's move to you have uh, broadly spoken about the youth and how they can seize the opportunities that are out here and i think if you're out there you have learned something and you're gonna take it uh by the horns and do something about it now let's move to infrastructure this is an area the president has had an interest in uh from transportation having good roads and i remember the the, the last time we had a discussion here about the food security uh we talked about good roads we are speaking about if I have a business, can I move my goods to this particular place? This is one of the area. I'm sure even this time round, there's amount for that. Now, do you think Kenya is is doing well in its infrastructural um, sector? Well, from now, now I'll speak like I'm an economist, and the government has invited me to give like uh, the way they did last week, and we've given our opinions. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, to advise them on uh, the infrastructural allocations to the budget for this year. Mm -hmm. Hillary, I will go for a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. In uh, the 2020-2021 financial year, mm -hmm. the budget that we are looking out for mm -hmm. is a budget that will bring about economic development mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. economic growth. Right. Uh, and I believe one of the things that we, we will read, uh, we will learn from uh, Corona is uh, mm. economic growth is not that very important. Mm -hmm. What matters most is economic development. And maybe for someone who is not an economist, they may wonder the, where the difference is. Mm. But economic growth is simply means the production in Kenya of goods and services mm -hmm. has increased. So if our GDP was 10 million, in 2021, we do 11 million, then that is economic growth. But now in economic development, mm -hmm. we mean how are the lives of people getting transformed? Is access to health care, are more people healthy mm -hmm. because of uh, access to health care? Another economic development, are literacy levels increasing because of an improved education system? Mm -hmm. Can people access food easily? because of uh, uh, economic development. Now, economic growth at times informs economic development, but not always. Mm -hmm. So on infrastructure, I would say the president has a track record. Mm -hmm. That one, we can give it to him. Mm -hmm. that, uh, he has done so many tremendous projects mm -hmm. that could have transformed lives. Mm -hmm. But now, to cushion Kenyans from uh, more borrowing, mm -hmm. I would allocate very little mm -hmm. for infrastructure in mm -hmm. the coming budget mm -hmm. and concentrate more on economic development, projects that will change the lives of people. Like if you build a road from um, Isolo to Moyale, mm -hmm. now the population, it's a good idea, okay. but my thinking here is eh, let's build a basic road between Isolo and Moyale that can transport people from one point to mm -hmm. another point. Mm -hmm. But these big projects with interchange, Sujui underpass, <laughs> overpass, those the capital desert. intensive, <laughs> in the coming year, we should reduce them mm -hmm. and concentrate more mm -hmm. on, uh, on projects that will bring about economic development. If it's education, we already have CBC. Mm -hmm. uh, there is money allocated for classrooms. But now, how does this money translate to economic development? Does the person down there mm -hmm. feel about it? Uh, does, does the person there get to benefit from the allocations in the Ministry of Education? Right. But because of uh, more classrooms and uh, conducive environment, the literacy levels go up. Right. Then that is economic development. So on infrastructure, the government should only now concentrate maybe mm -hmm. on basic infrastructures. Those ambitious projects, let's keep them aside for this financial year. Mm -hmm. We see what uh, the pandemic will bring us to. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in the next financial year, as the president is exiting his uh, final year, then now he can concentrate maybe on one uh, capital project again, mm -hmm. depending again on how the pandemic will have taken us. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, 
my thinking now infrastructural projects mm -hmm. to breaks kidogo we work on things that uh, will help mwananchi inuke kidogo you know if you could just mention a few of the things we have the lamu port we have the kisumu port we have the sgr and now we have the nivasha inland which is through the sgr and uh, i i want to quote uh, some of the outcries of the people out here and these are the truck drivers why would we have good roads for transportation but we can't use them right now things are going through the sgr and we are hoping it will move to kisumu we have complaints of these drivers we have good roads okay but we are not using them we, we have what we call a short term mm -hmm. medium term and long term goals mm -hmm. in economic planning mm -hmm. now in the short run truck drivers will be affected mm -hmm. in the medium term they could still be affected but in the long term mm -hmm. they may want to appreciate because if you look at a, at a project like sgr mm -hmm. of course in the medium term and the short term uh, some towns like Voi, Makin, no, Makindu, yeah, and uh, Mali, those, th th mm -hmm. those towns that used to be stopovers for those trucks will be affected. But Hillary, if you count the number of trucks we have in 2020, it's mm -hmm. maybe 1,000. Our population in Kenya is mm -hmm. uh, 47, 47 million. Mm -hmm. In the next 10 years, this population will, will have gone up. When the population goes up, even the population of trucks will have, it will, gone, will up. have gone up. Mm -hmm. The cargo that is being transported will also have gone up. And that is why now people will start appreciating mm -hmm. the SGR. The SGR, mm -hmm. though it's a government project, it's like a, it's like a business. When you're starting a new business, mm -hmm. you put a lot of capital. The first year, you may make losses mm -hmm. because you may keep uh, correcting where things are not so good, not you may also lose some stock and you want to revamp again. Mm -hmm. But now when you stabilize, you get your clientele and the population maybe in the area where you have your business is growing. Kama wewe ndi ulingia kwanza, wewe ndi benefit. Boro usilalia maskio. So some projects like the Lamu port, Kisumu port, mm -hmm. may look like a, they were a waste of time at this point. Eh? Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, it, that's not the case. It's only in the short term. In mm -hmm. the medium term, mm -hmm. things will change. In the long term, in fact, someone like me, who, who may become president in 20-something, mm -hmm. in 2040, 2050, or 2030s, I'll be lucky to be a president of a country that already has an SGR, mm -hmm. that has the Lamu port, so that now I concentrate on other things. Eh? Uh, yeah. yeah, so we should appreciate those projects uh, much as we are mourning the short-term effects, eh? mm -hmm. the, the long-term effects will, will, will be good. You, uh, you, you have coined your argument with what the president would say, we are borrowing for us to have this infrastructure and it will be of benefit in years to come. It doesn't have to be today, but years to come. I, I, I want us not to move to the other area um, of which you will have to talk about corruption later uh, because this is one of the i would say it has been a pandemic in our country in in, in regards to the monies that come in and how they are used but now you have you had started to talk about the education sector we had the 100 percent transition this year and we had problems still the schools will, will reopen uh by september if that will happen uh, according to the directives and the instructions that were given. But still, education needs to be supported in this country. From, uh, from uh, the low grades to Miambo, Kuna Tivet, Kuna Nini Nini, budget allocation will go to these areas. But will the least fortunate person in this country benefit? Uh, definitely, yes. <laughs> and I like. Uh, thinking about it this way mm -hmm. if you take your kid to a private school the school fees will be like uh, mm -hmm. maybe twenty thousand per term mm -hmm. those are estimations eh? mm -hmm. if you take the same kid to a public school mm -hmm. maybe fees will be even 500 mm -hmm. and that what goes to books and such mm -hmm. this kid will not eat food in school mm -hmm. because it's a public school they may not even have the, that personalized whatever, but they will have access mm -hmm. to like 70% of mm -hmm. 
of the necessary materials achana smoking a sausage kwa shule they will have access to that achana hata na history ya keyboard na nini we are talking about books right and teachers mm -hmm. now what so many people forget is that uh, the 20000 versus the 500 someone is taking care of the 19000 now remove the 30% that uh, ni madoido kidogo mm -hmm. ubakishe maybe the to say that it cost 10000 mm -hmm. on a normal day someone has taken care of uh, 9000 ni ulipeda upeke yake mm -hmm. if you go to colleges the same if you're sponsored by the government mm -hmm. it's always cheaper so that is how government supports education right but now this education squeeze wana sema it kusoma education si muhimu umuhimu ni ku convert your education ni ku edo and that's my point. Kuna ka ukweli. <laughs> Ni ukweli. Kwanza wanasema tuliambiwaga education is the key, lakini squeeze wa mebadilisha funguo. Well now, it could be true, mm -hmm. but simply inakonyesha life, mm -hmm. inazidi kuwa ngumu. Right, but true. what is education? Mm -hmm. Education is your grade A, education is your grade B. In mm -hmm. fact, we say education is what remains is what remains in your head mm -hmm. where after you leave school and those exams yeah mm -hmm. so other come only part of grade power 2001 mm -hmm. you're in history my friend education is what mm -hmm. you're doing and your character now is what determines whether you your school or mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. and uh, these are locations for the minister of education mm -hmm. i personally support them about the hundred percent transition mm -hmm. Every project, ikianza, yes, na kuwaga na tushida. Mm. So we should also not be those people who are not very cautious about projects. Again, it, Gavai mesema 100% transition, and we expect it to be seamless. If mm. it's seamless, then we are not a good society. Mm. Kuna kitu tutakuwa tukifake mahali. Mm. Na tukipika, yo, if the data is cooked to Ambia, it was successful, mm. you will start saying the government cooked data. Mm. So, we should also be accommodative as a society that a project like a 100% transition mm -hmm. will have some challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, the, what we should keep is a track record of the challenges so that in the budget allocation, where I'm saying we should not behave normally, mm -hmm. if we had a budget for 100% transition in 2018, mm. now when the Minister for, for Treasury is presenting the budget estimates for 2020, mm. as a Minister of Education at another 10 million for for hundred percent transition, mm. no. By the by the time one year is over, you should get a report that these were the challenges. And one of the challenges is lack of desks in right. schools. Mm -hmm. So the budget allocation should not be ten million to the Minister of Education. No, it should be ten million for desks. Itemized now. Yeah. It should be itemized. Okay. Because again to kick out to keep at your ministries donor to ambin zakfanyanini. So we should beef up how we do our budgets and as if we're informed with okay. research yeah what what is ailing which sector mm -hmm. yeah all right to malaysia kwa mambo ya corruption this has been the question this has been the problem every project of the government that comes in fulani alikula pesa fulani amefanyia hivi we have to question and i have always asked this did it mean everyone who was elected to office and who was appointed to the office was corrupt well, Hilary, uh, I, I will ask you or request you mm -hmm. that uh, the, the next show we are doing here, we do it on corruption and how bad it is. Mm -hmm. But because it's a question for today mm -hmm. and uh, in relationship to, 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 to the budget reading that is happening on Thursday, remember we are paying uh, 904 billion, which is almost a third of our budget mm -hmm. to cater for public debt. And the question out there is, uh, why do we have to borrow this much? Now, even to the youths who are watching, I'd like to tell them, Denny Simbaya, mm -hmm. Denny Simbaya. In fact, one how many Madeni? <laughs> All the people you see in this country, one how many Madeni? And, and those people who fear deaths, mm -hmm. by the way, who succeed, well, okay, when they succeed, but when you succeed, Zaidi, when you have value, mm -hmm. debt. Now, she their debt, ni nini? Ni moja. I would like to use maybe the example of uh, help. Mm. A guy is given help, you buy a laptop, you start those online jobs. That debt is worth it, my friend. Enda uchukue, enda wambia help wa kuongeze ingine. 
Mm-hmm. Sasa ununue a bigger laptop, a faster one. Mm-hmm. Unaona? Mm-hmm. But sasa umedungwa help. Katuma yeah? fair. <laughs> Ukatuma fair. <laughs> Eh? <laughs> Umepewa help tena mm-hmm. Sijui walikuwa asema ni freedom is coming tomorrow Umeenda kuita hiyo freedom mm-hmm. Umeenda umelala mahali Imeisha. Party after party yeah, the, 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 Exactly <laughs> After one week mm-hmm. you're broke To you you should go and tell help Next mm-hmm. next semester utaki help Because mm-hmm. Ina kuingiza kwa mashida <laughs> Then you're wasting mm-hmm. And now if I was the president today mm-hmm. Would I borrow Would I enter into debt yes i will nita nita copa my friend nita copa china nita copa america nita copa sweden kila mtu mahali mwenye kona ya kukopeshana mimi nita copa but now the problem we have in this country and what will kill us una copa 50 billion ya kujenga dika road Dika road inafaa ianze chiromo tu dika huko Del Monte mm-hmm. unakuja budget inaslashiwa dika road inafika kasarani Aye. what is that what nonsense is that mm-hmm. we should stop that and if we really want to make value out of our debts mm-hmm. then we should put this debt into the right channels mm-hmm. by the way i pesa ya deni yenye tunakopa me i believe Kenya does not need kukopa sana mm-hmm. we can, we produce enough we can feed our people, we can run our economy with very minimum debt. <laughs> if and only if we were not wasting this money through corruption. True. You asked a very good question. Does it mean that uh, every person who we elected mm-hmm. is corrupt? And I'll say power corrupts. And absolute power mm-hmm. corrupts absolutely. <laughs> now, <laughs> if unajua hii maneno inaendaga hivi. And I will not speak, uh, I have done <laughs> research on governance on some issues, eh? mm-hmm. and I will not quote that research today. Mm-hmm. I will quote what some MPs and some governors who are MPs eh, mm-hmm. have said. Right. Et tulipewa 10K kwa cho ya parliament. It's in the public domain. It reminds me of the sugar scandal, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> now, how, how do we make laws in this nation? Mm-hmm. MPs watakuja? They want to pass a certain law, then we end up paying with ten k you condani. So come all in here, Parliament. Now we go and say a corrosafi kabisa. We 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 bagi ni 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 ni. Prado ya ko mungu amekujali na iko hapo kwa parking. Wenzako wana pewa hundred k just to say I. We are here to speak. We support your motion. Wana pewa hundred k. We are kissing my no. You don't support. Akuna yo hundred k. Mm-hmm. Then uh, when you anasema hivyo ni MPs 90 when mm-hmm. mnapinga ni 10. So what happens? 5 of the 10 mm-hmm. that are refusing wataona hii game tusha lose. So the easiest way mm-hmm. acha pia mimi niseme I mm-hmm. so that I get the money. And now what happens mm-hmm. with time? Eh? Mm-hmm. And even people who work in corrupt environments mm-hmm. and the auditor general when I say corrupt I'm talking about all offices that the Auditor General has raised queries mm-hmm. about their expenditures. If you work in a corrupt environment, okay. the influence is very high. All right. So MPs, mm. maybe you are elected, all of them are not corrupt. What we should be asking ourselves is, uh, mm-hmm. is Parliament that corrupt that most MPs who even went there, even reverends? Mm-hmm. What no, about the <laughs> reverend? <laughs> no, Bishop, we have to end that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kuna kuwa, so labda kuna corruption in parliament mm. or the corrupt of course there is corruption in parliament maybe it's on very high levels okay. that even those guys are getting swallowed in mm, yeah, absolute corruption mm-hmm. <laughs> all right thank you so much uh, job for coming and uh, all your ideas and especially speaking to the youth to a channel attitude mbaya kazi yote ni kazi as long as inaleta unga mm-hmm. thank you back home for keeping us company uh, we were talking about the budget allocation and we are trying to look into things how things are and how things should be and how they would be in the uh, recent or in a few days to come my name is Dereva Hilary i'll be seeing you again later in the day keep it y254 good morning <laughs>